Hi, I'm Dala, and today we are continuing with the 62 kilowatt hour battery repair. Let's get started. First of all, I'd like to thank you all that commented on the previous videos. I've gotten some amazing knowledge here, uh, especially thanks to uh, some Nissan techs that also commented on this particular issue that can appear on the 62 kilowatt hour battery packs. Nissan actually has a technical service bulletin on repairing exactly this module that I have open right now. Or when I say repairing, uh, I just mean replacing. Nissan doesn't actually repair these modules, they just replace them. Okay, so speaking about that TSB, this technical service bulletin, let's take a quick look at it. So this was actually re released quite recently, uh, while I was actually having this issue. And uh, it mentions that uh, the 62 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, it can have this un isolation fault error codes and it will prevent the vehicle from starting. And uh, it's not exactly the same issue, but um, if we look at the example pictures, they mentioned that uh, these uh, modules, uh, the rear tall modules and the front modules can have problems with isolation faults. And there's also some pictures of some damages here. We can see here that it has a bent retention plate and this is what it should look like and this is what it could look like. But uh, my issue was not exactly this. I think my issue was more due to the fact that the battery pack was crashed quite uh, hard. So yeah, but very interesting to see that Nissan is having issues with uh, their battery packs. So yeah, but uh, let's get back to the video. I haven't been able to source one of these modules yet, but I am really eager to get back to testing with this battery. So let's go through the steps of uh, fixing the last bits and uh, let's use it in the meantime until we get a replacement module. Hi, this is Dollar from the future and uh, things didn't go as planned in this video. Actually, it went much better. Uh, I was able to secure a replacement 62 kilowatt hour tall module for the rear. This is a used module, but I think it will work, work much better than the one that we know for sure is damaged. So yeah, let's use this one. Okay, here we have an insulation resistance testing meter. And uh, it's a big me bigger than a normal multimeter. And what this one will do is that it will uh, we have it set now to 500 volts. And uh, we will do a test where I connect uh, one of these leads, the positive one. I'm going to connect here to the uh, positive terminal. And this other lead I'm going to attach to ground. I'm just going to hook it here to, to the side of the terminal casing. Not, not the negative one on the battery, I'm just going to attach it to the casing. Then I'm going to press test and we will see uh, how big the resistance to ground is. So let's go. We get 500 milliohms. So this test is good. Uh, there is no apparent leakage to ground or anything like that. So let's do the same test with the other terminal. So I'm moving this over to here and let's press test again. Over 500 mega ohm. So that's good. Another thing I can mention about this test is that I have the cells under compression, but some of you commented that it would be better to actually have the compression points that are when it's inside this uh, battery case. So I'm going to run this same test again with the module mounted exactly how it should be in the battery. So let's do that. And now I have the cell torqued down to spec and to satisfy your curiosity I'm going to run the test again. So we have the same result over 500 mega ohm resistance and if I move the test lead over to the other point and then run the test again. Over 500 mega ohm. So it checks out. Uh, the specification inside the Nissan manual says that it needs to be over 20 mega ohms in order to pass. 
So according to this test, it is good. But I know that it isn't good, but yeah. Let's continue testing the battery. Okay, so the cell balancing issue. I was originally gonna use this lithium charger, but it only went up to 24 volts. So I instead had to get a laboratory power supply. This one actually goes up to 130 volts DC, which is very nice. So now I have it hooked up here um, to the positive and negative lead, and I am manually constant current charging this one with uh, one amp. I'm gonna slowly bring it back up in line with the rest of the pack and um, yeah that should take care of the balance issue. So once I've done that I will reassemble everything. Okay so three weeks has passed since I started this repair. I was just about to glue the case shut uh, but then I got word of a replacement module and this arrived after a few weeks of waiting and now I have uh, balanced it in according to what the rest of the rear pack should be. We had it at 37.08 volts, uh, like the original one. So now it's been balancing and um, yeah, I'm ready to tear apart the pack again and replace the module. So let's do that. Okay, so I have the pack open again and I took out these two modules. But one thing I wanted to show you that I actually did wrong uh, earlier in this video was that the bolts that attach to the positive and negative uh, side, the bolts are actually free, free floating inside the module. So you have to actually put some, some copper down and clamp it down to actually get a good connection. So I reran all my uh, testing with the uh, mega meter but uh, it still shows the same thing over 500 mega ohms insulation resistance. So the electrolyte has dried up. Uh, this was the one with, which I marked as an X. So it has dried up, which is uh, stopping the short from happening. But I still want to instead use this uh, new module and hopefully it will work much better. Okay, so the battery pack is back together and I like to leave myself or any future person working on it some helpful notes. Uh, for instance, I wrote on this cell that it has been replaced. And uh, I also wrote on this one in the corner that was manually balanced up. I wrote that also, so in case uh, further down the line if it develops another issue, someone uh, opening this can know that, yeah, this cell, we tried to do something before, but yeah. So now I will glue the cover back on, but oh, one, uh, one very important thing is um, this new cell here now, we don't know the capacity of it. Ideally, I should have run a capacity test and checked how many kilowatt hours I actually can store in it to verify that it is a like good match for this battery. But uh, I don't have the testing capacity to, to test these modules. They're actually uh, quite large. If we look at the stamp here, uh, focus. Uh, they are actually uh, 5.8 kilowatt hours. So they are quite quite big, these uh, tall rear modules. But um, I will just install this now, uh, cover on, and we will get it in the car, and then we will see if it works. So for the reassembly, I've uh, taken a carpet knife and I've cut out all the gasket, and I'm gonna use uh, this Sikaflex. 221, uh, it's sort of a uh, glue or, yeah, very strong glue, I don't know what the English equivalent would be, but um, you need something strong here, but uh, not maybe as strong as uh, windscreen glue, that would be very hard to remove in the future, but you need something semi-strong that will create a permanent bond so water cannot get into the pack. So now I will begin the laborious process of squeezing this out of the tube. And I got two tubes. Wish me luck. Phew! So, the shell is glued back together. Now, let's put this battery in a car. So it's time for EVNX to leave the shop. So I removed the battery. Uh, of course disaster struck as usual with this project um, and uh, the threads on one of the bolts, actually the one in the rear, it chewed up the 
nut inside. There's a captive nut. So I had to get this um, M12 by 1.25 uh, thread kit. Uh, they're very unusual fine threaded bolts. So I will try and chase the hole. It's, uh, it's, it's this one that's in the back and that's usually almost always the rustiest. So yeah, I will do that and continue. Okay, I managed to clean up the threads, but a pro tip here, if this bolt uh, really breaks due to rust, you can actually sneak in one of these captive nuts uh, from this hole here. So I've actually had to do that on one vehicle that we couldn't salvage. That's a really good way to get you out of a pinch if you're having problems with these rear bolts. So yeah, just a quick pro tip there. The sun is setting and the battery is in. Let's start it up. And... No check EV warning light. And we have 443 kilometers off range. Okay. That's the easy part done. Now the next part of testing starts. Okay, let's look at Leaf Spy. So we have a 20 millivolt uh, diff at 91.4% uh, state of charge. So now I'm gonna go for a drive and we will see if this uh, middle section here, right in the middle, if we have a high diff there uh, at low state of charge. If the replacement module shows higher voltage than the rest, then that's good. Then it means that it will be higher capacity than the other modules. But if this part of the battery will sag heavily compared to the rest, then the new replacement module will be lower capacity. So this will be very exciting. Now I will go for a drive. Yeah, so it's the next day, beautiful sunny day. And um, I decided to take a road trip. I went on a 160 kilometer uh, test drive here uh, to go and service some um, fast chargers, <laughs> trial by fire. Um, but yeah, so far it seems to be holding up great. Uh, I'm gonna drive home and then I'm gonna check the millivolt delta again. So yeah, let's do that. I'll just finish up here. Okay, so we're back home and um, I have uh, driven the leaf a bit just to try to get the battery down and we have the results and the results are amazing. I've driven today 225 kilometers and we have about a third of the battery left. But the best thing is um, the battery has a millivolt delta of 29 and that's really good. I mean, that's super. I mean this replacement module that was put in it matches up perfectly with the rest of the battery i was so worried that it was gonna be like really high like maybe 50 to 100 millivolts either below or above but now i'm super happy about this and i can finally stop worrying about this pack and uh, focus on some other project so Thank you everyone that watched this video and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.